Hi, my name is Colton Cook. I'm the Vice President of the Alabama 4-H State Ambassadors, and today I'm interviewing George Edmondson. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, what's up? My name is George Edmondson. I'm owner of Seed Creative Video Production. Uh, we are based in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, we have been in production now uh, as, a, as a company. I've been a full-time video guy for um, almost seven years now. Okay, so what was your major in college? I know a lot of people in this field, they don't go to college for this. Yeah, so uh, my major in college, I was actually a music major. I had a vocal scholarship. Um, at the time I was in college, I was also in a band. The band had the opportunity to sign to a record label, and we got to tour, and we got to do some touring in Europe, which was really fun. But when I went to Europe, I was gone from school for so long, there was no way I could make up the work. So I'm actually a college dropout, um, and I, I, didn't, I didn't finish. So uh, part of that journey is actually what led me to video production. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, my, I was actually a, a vocal major in, uh, when I was in college. That's interesting. I want to be, I want to major in music education. Oh, sweet. <laughs> okay. What is a day like in your job? Uh, so a day in video production, every day uh, is totally different. And that is absolutely true. Um, one day you may be here in the studio uh, filming, you know, just some people on like a simple backdrop. And then you sit here and you edit. It's really chill. Other days, you may be crawling down a 50-foot hole in the ground, and you're filming guys, and you have all this PPE. That stands for personal protection equipment. So you've got masks and, and air, air things on your back. And uh, other days, you may be filming. Probably the weirdest thing I've ever filmed was a facelift. And that was a very interesting experience. And so, some again, sometimes you're doing stuff like what we're doing today, you know, a simple light, microphone, uh, really simple setup. And then other days you're crawling down a shaft <laughs> or filming a facelift. So every day is, is totally different. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about what I do is that there's every day does not look the same. Um, it give you get to meet you get to meet so many interesting people uh, as you do this. You get to learn different things uh, just about all different types of industry. One of the things that we do, um, we film for like workforce development. So we're really heavily involved in different industries all around our area. And so I get to see, sometimes I get to see how a tire is made. One of our clients is BF Goodrich. Um, other times I might get to see how Pepsi is bottled because Buffalo Rock is a Pepsi bottling company and they're one of our clients. So every day, totally different. And, and that's one of the things that I really love about what I do. Okay. What is the best thing about your job? The best thing about my job? Um, probably because I am the owner is the flexibility. Um, you know, I, I started as a freelance videographer and then now I guess I'm the owner of a production company because I do have people that work for me. Um, but I just, I love being my own boss. I love being able to say, I want to take vacation with my family. I have a wife and four kids. Sometimes we want to go to Disney World. Sometimes we want to go to the beach. I'm able to look at my look at my schedule and I can block off time and I can just do it. I don't have to ask for permission. Um, that That's probably what I love about this job. On the flip side of that, you are your own boss. And so if you're not, you know, if you're not dedicated, if you don't have the drive, you're going to be sitting around twiddling your thumbs because you have no work, because you haven't been hustling on the days that you were at work. Um, and so it's both a good thing and a bad thing, but yeah, flexibility is, is fantastic. What advice would you give a youth interested in your job? So the advice I would give to someone who's interested in doing what I do, number one is just create and 
it doesn't matter what gear you have. This is the biggest thing that people that want to go into this get so they get so upset because they don't have the big fancy light. They don't have the microphones and the cameras and all the equipment. That's okay. If you want to get started in filmmaking video, if you have a cell phone, if you have access to a smartphone, more than likely it can film video and you can start creating now. Don't wait. There's no point in waiting. Create, make video, find find kind of your niche, find what you enjoy, the types of filmmaking. You can edit on a phone. There's a million free editing apps um, and just create things. From there, you'll begin to, to, like I said, you'll begin to find your niche and figure out what you like about it, what you might not like about it. And then just start to save up a little bit of money and maybe get a little tripod that you can sit your camera and your phone and then maybe a microphone and just build up. That's the way that I built my business was I built my business with starting out with a small, it's called a DSLR as a style of camera um, with a small DSLR and free editing software. And then we've been able to build it up debt free uh, over the last seven years to what we do now. Um, So that's number one. Number two, and this goes hand in hand, start creating, number one. Number two, find people like me that are near you that you can just talk to and say, I'm interested in doing what you do. Can I shadow you for a few days? Can I watch what you do? Um, You know, uh, can I come and hang out at the studio and watch you? Stuff like that. I have people all the time in and out of the studio that just come for a few days, they watch it, and then they leave. And maybe they go make videos and maybe they realize it's not for me because it is always different. Um, Sometimes it's very stressful. Sometimes it's high demand. You have to meet deadlines. You have clients that you have to make happy. Um, but then other times, you know, I, I personally, of course, I love it. That's why I keep doing it. Um, but yeah, number one, make stuff. It doesn't matter. Your equipment does not matter. I promise you, just do it. Make it. Number two, get connected with people who are already established. Ask them questions because most of the time, there'll be someone like me who absolutely loves talking to people about what I do. And I love helping people um, kind of figure out if it's right for them. Okay. A lot of adults don't believe that filmmaking or video creation is a viable um, career for their child. What would you say to a parent to assure them that they could do that? Um, What I would tell a parent who may be, conflicted with the the idea that video creation is a career pathway. I guess number one is you're watching a video. So uh, you're watching a video about someone who has successfully over the last seven years grown a business, brought on employees, and provided a lifestyle for my family. I have a wife and four kids um, that was unachievable uh, prior to me starting this, there's no way we would have been able to live uh, the lifestyle that we live um, without video. Um, so I guess that that's number one. Number two, my daughter, uh, I, again, I have four kids. My daughter, who's nine, she is really interested in video. And I, or, I already have her started with, we ha- she has a little iPod touch and a little program called iMovie. It's a free editing software. And she makes little vlogs and little fun little videos for YouTube. But what she doesn't even understand, she does it for fun. I didn't force her. But what she doesn't understand is she's already at nine years old, found something that she loves. And she's beginning to understand the fundamentals of storytelling, of editing, of shooting, of framing. She's doing all this stuff. She doesn't even know it. By the time she is is college age, you know, she may very well be working full time for me. And she already has a career pathway um, in place. So but that's what I would say. Um, Video is everywhere. We all know it is. It's everywhere you look. It's on every device. Um, you, You go on any social media, all social medias offer video support. So if you think about that anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, All of these offer video support, um, and that's because video is here to stay, and it's only growing. 
uh, I was very fortunate when I got into this is right when video started becoming accessible to everyone because of smartphones. Um, Instagram had not even started offering video support when I started and then they did. And I was one of the first ones, at least locally, to recognize that there's opportunity here for companies. If you have an Instagram, you can now make videos and I can make those videos and they're going to be professionally done and not something shaky and shot on a phone by, you know, someone who uh, isn't trying to take advantage of that. Um, so look, I, I understand it's scary. Uh, as a parent, you want the best for your kid and you want to know that they're going into an industry that's here to stay. Um, video is exploding. It's not only is it here to stay, but there's more of a demand and will continue to be more of a demand as more people have access to that thing and the internet. So no worries there. Uh, I, I'm good. My family's good. We're going to make videos. Um, and this is going to be what I do until I, until I retire. And then I'll probably still do it just because I love it. Okay. Especially in Alabama, from what I can see, it's not necessarily saturated with video production and things of that nature. How hard was it for you to gain traction or how hard do you think it would be for someone to gain traction here in Alabama? So the market is not saturated in Alabama. That is absolutely true. Uh, if you go to places like Los Angeles, uh, Atlanta, New York, there's a lot of video people, but there's also a high demand for video. So even in those areas, you're probably going to find more quantity of work as opposed to here in Alabama. You might not find the quantity. You might not be able to just get, get hired, get hired, get hired, how you do over there. But what I've found is I'm able to have um, better quality rates because there's not a lot of people offering what we do at the level that we offer. And so I may have one client who can take care of my bills for the next six months, as opposed to if I'm in a saturated market, I have to find 60 clients to get, take care of my bills for six months. So um, with that said, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't too difficult because I do have a sales background and a sales mentality. And I know that first and foremost, it doesn't matter how many videos I make and how great they are. If I'm not actively pursuing new clients, it's going to be really hard for me to get new clients. Some of them will see what I'm doing. And now we're in a place where we've done so much work and we have so many clients. We just get clients from word of mouth and they see us online and stuff like that. But there at the beginning, I mean, I was, I was going door to door and introducing myself and explaining I'm a video person. I'm just looking to build a portfolio. I'm not looking for any sort of high pay right now just anything that'll cover a couple hours for me to shoot and edit and I got told no 90% of the time but that 10% that said yes are again the foundation the building block to where I am now um and so you have to you have to sell so how hard was it that's I don't know that's that's a hard question for me to answer because yes it was hard but I have a sales mentality and I'm used to being told no. And so um, that's one thing. Skip back to one of the questions you just asked about parents. Y your kid has to be able to take it when they say no, because I get told no a lot. I've gotten told no a lot, uh, but those yeses are the ones that matter. And so it's a numbers game. You keep at it. You're going to do it. Um, it's not saturated. I mean, right now, and it's easier to sell video now than it was seven years ago when I started um, because people are seeing it all over the place. And there are people like me and like others that do it in this area that have opened um, people's eyes to the fact that you can have video done professionally and it will make a difference and provide an ROI for your business. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's not saturated in Alabama. There's, but there is, there's plenty of work. Um, 
literally anywhere you go. I mean, we have clients all over the world. So uh, keep that in mind too. We are in Alabama, but the internet is a powerful, powerful tool. Some of our biggest clients are in Washington state and we've done stuff for a company in China and we've uh, done stuff for, we've been sent to Australia by the company in Washington. So they're not even in an Alabama and they sent us to Australia to film. So again, it's don't, don't think, I wouldn't think that way anymore. The world is a lot smaller now. Um, just because you're based in Alabama is almost irrelevant at this point. If you do good work and if you make the right connections, you're going to be able to find work. I have no, the, you know, that we've been doing it for years. It's no issues. Okay, so who would hire a production company? Who would hire a production company? Fantastic question. Um, anyone and everyone can hire a production company. Uh, it just depends on what their expectations are um, and what their budget is. You know, I mean, we at the end of the day, this is a business. I absolutely love what I do, um, but I have to run it like a business. Um, at first, I said yes to everyone. Now I'm a little bit more picky. Um, you know, a lot of people will contact us and it might not be uh, their expectations are at a lower level and they expect a lower production quality and value. So they expect to pay a lower rate. That makes total sense. But we have structured ourselves to only accept um, medium to high budgets, if that makes any sense at all. So, um, you know, I typically tend to pass those jobs off to, uh, we talked about it earlier, students, people who have contacted me in the past that want to do this. They don't know how to get clients. I'll tell the, I'll tell the person straight up if they contact me, you know, we don't do weddings anymore. You know, we don't, we don't edit things for, you know, we get a lot of requests, especially now during the COVID-19 um, to do editing for, of picture slideshows for funerals, stuff like that. And, you know, Seed Creative, my company doesn't offer that anymore, but I know plenty of guys who are getting their foot in the door and they will do it and they will do it at that lower rate because they need the experience. Um, Colton, I think his video maybe froze, do you think? Um, I'm not, I think so. Okay. Mm. Let's see if he hops back on. Here, here he comes. All right. So the power just blew in our studio. Sorry about that. Uh, but we were on the question, uh, who hires a production company? Uh, and the answer again is anyone and everyone. So um, a list of some of our clients, uh, BF Goodrich, um, Maccabee Construction, uh, Buffalo Rock, they're a Pepsi bottling company. We've done work for the University of Alabama. We've done work for the University of Auburn. Uh, we've done work for Uperk Coffee across the street. So we get a lot of different, uh, we get a wide variety of clients. And um, again, that's why I love it because I get to see people and, and learn about different industries and all that good stuff. Okay. So what kind of content do you make? I know you just said like you used to do weddings, but now you don't. So could you know what kind of content you make now? Sure. I'd, I'd say a majority of the type of content we make is classified as corporate video, corporate content. What that means is um, we do a lot of safety training videos. We do a lot of internal videos. These are videos that no one publicly is ever going to see because they're only for BF Goodrich employees or Maccabee employees or something like that. Um, but then we also do documentary filmmaking as well, which is something that I really enjoy. And that's truly where my passion is when it comes to video is the storytelling aspect of real life, of documentary filmmaking. And so we've done corporate, we've done weddings before. We don't offer that now. Um, we've done uh, commercial. We do some commercial stuff. We do a lot of Facebook and Instagram, you know, uh, ads and stuff like that. But then also documentary filmmaking. What is the process of making a film or a video? So the process of making a film and video, um, I would say, first off, 
you find out who your client is. And what I like to do is I like to meet with them face to face. Obviously, right now, that's a little bit more difficult. So we'll use Zoom. Um, but I will just ask them, what is the goal of your video? What are you trying to accomplish? Because a lot of times people come to us and say, we want a video, but we don't really know what we want. We don't know what that looks like. And so first and foremost, who is your audience? What is the goal? What is the purpose of the video? Once we've established that, we look at, um, okay, what is it going to take to tell that story? Do we think it's going to take one day of interviews and then filming B-roll? Uh, B-roll is, the, those are shots that you would see um, over top of someone talking. So for instance, if I were talking, but you also shot saw shots of our studio, that's called B-roll. Um, is it going to take one day, two days, 10 days, five days? Uh, and then what does it look like for editing? So is this editing going to be graphics heavy? Are we going to have to do animation? Anything like that. And then I can go back to my client and say, all right, Mr. or Mrs. Client, you have option A is going to be this price. Option B is this price. Option C is this price. Obviously, the the, the different options lay out. We can film for four days. We can film for 20 days. We can add graphics. We can have, you know, a drone flying over or no drones or whatever. And then I try to cater uh, within their budget and then they can let us know option B looks good. Um, let's go with that. And then we schedule the dates. We say, what, who's the interviews? When does the B-roll is the, you know, if we're filming in a, in a plant, that's manufacturing something, is the plant available for us to film during these times? We go into scheduling. Uh, once we've scheduled it, obviously we show up and we film. We've got it all written out. This is all done during something called pre-production. So all those meetings and getting the shot lists written out, all that is called pre-production. Then we go into production, which is showing up, filming, um, asking the questions, getting the B-roll, gathering all of it. Then we come back to the studio and we go into production. Uh, I'm sorry, post-production. And that is we offload all the footage, we get it all organized, and we go into the editing process. Once we've edited a first draft, we send that draft off to the client. They'll watch it. Typically, a day or two goes by, and then they come back and they'll have a list of revisions. That's very, very like regular. That happens all the time. We expect revisions because... We want to work hand in hand with our client. We don't want to just say, here's a video. All right, see ya. What if they hate it? You know, what if there's one little thing we could have done that would have made it that much better? So um, in our contract, we state that they have up to three edit revisions. So uh, that would be our first round of revisions. We send it off and they'll say, uh, you know, you misspelled a name here. You know, change the color on this shot here. Uh, we want this font. Take this shot out because there's, a proprietary machine in the background that we can't show in the video, stuff like that. Um, we go through one or two rounds of revisions. At that point, we're typically done. Send the video off, we get our final payment. So how we handle payments, we do 50% up front. that books the production days, and then they, they pay that, we do the production, and then we get the 50% remaining balance on the back end. So once they've approved the video and we're good to go, they pay us, everyone's happy. And then hopefully we're doing work with them again, you know, in a couple months when they need more videos. Hey, what is your favorite part of production just from pre-production to post-production? My favorite part is definitely production. If I had to out of pre-production, production and post production is what I love. I love being out in the field or here in the studio and getting to work with different uh, styles of lighting, getting to ask different questions. What I really love is the human element, though, and that's communicating with the people that I'm filming and pulling emotions and responses out of them that they, they might not have been able to do on their own. You know, they couldn't set a phone up and, and give the type of response I need. So a lot of times I'll ask a question and they may answer and then I'll ask the same question in a different way and get a little twist on it and try to get them comfortable in front of the camera so that, you know, sometimes we need vulnerability. We need true human emotion um, so that we can get that story um, 
told the way that we think it needs to be told so that it's effective. So production, I love it. I love carrying the camera around, filming. Um, that That's my jam. But I do it all. You know, I start, I, I do pre-production, production and post where we kind of, uh, we're, we're, we do all three here. Okay. So the last thing is, I know you made a documentary for the state of Alabama for the bicentennial. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? Just kind of explain what that is. and Absolutely. So, yeah, long story short, um, I made a video of a friend of mine. Uh, I wanted to film a documentary, and I told him, look, you don't have to pay me. I just want to do it because he has a really unique story. I made the documentary. I showed it to a few people. Someone at the local arts council saw it. They wanted me to come and then make a video, a little small documentary about a local artist here who's creating um, these different panels and pieces of art for the Bicentennial Commission. Um, that's the people that you know celebrate Alabama's 200th birthday. Um, well, then the Bicentennial Commission found out that we were gonna do documentary and they said, hey, we want a documentary, but it was like way bigger. And so it went from a one day shoot to over a year of filming. Um, it obviously the budget increased substantially um, because we needed to film for a year and take the editing and all that good stuff. So um, that was an incredible experience. That documentary actually releases, it's probably, it may be released by the time this airs, um, but it's supposed to release on uh september august no and in two weeks from now so august um 16th is when it airs on apt uh alabama public television and then once it's aired it's fully available to the public for free um and everyone will get to go and enjoy that it's called alabama in the making um one cool story about some of what i do and i'm getting a little bit off of the documentary but i'll come back to it um, we were, we made a, a video, uh, as just an April Fool's video, like a silly video that we put on the internet. Um, a guy in Los Angeles saw it and he shared the video on Facebook and I went and I thanked him for sharing. And he said, your video brought me joy today. I find value in that. And he said, any camera that we make that you want is yours. So come to find out, this is the CEO of a company in Los Angeles called Red. If you've ever heard of Red Cameras, you uh, by the laugh, you. Yeah, so we, um, we have a connection now with the CEO of Red Digital Cinema, and he sent us a fully outfitted Red camera system that is just, it's right back there, and it's incredible. And we got that camera, and then two weeks later, we got booked for that documentary. And so we were able to shoot the most of the documentary on our brand new red camera that we were given for free from the CEO of Red. Uh, I got to go out to Los Angeles earlier this year and meet with him and talk with him. And it was a really, really awesome experience. And so that just shows you the power of video. It was a video that we made that got us the red camera. Someone just saw it randomly on Facebook. It was a video that we made, a documentary that tied in and got us the big documentary with the state so videos work they're very effective um and and yeah so that i i, I had to get that story in there because i know you, i i guess you didn't know about it and so i wanted to make sure everyone knew uh that that's just a really cool story about um about seed creative and about our journey and getting to film that documentary on that free amazing camera system was uh was really cool i saw that uh, video on your youtube channel and i was like how in the world do you just get a red camera for free? And I think that's interesting because I think it's also important to note that those cameras are in the tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's so it's yeah, the one that he sent us is a fifty thousand uh, so, dollar Yep. That's a that, you got a good deal on that one. <laughs> yep. Didn't even pay shipping. That was good <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. So you'd like to share anything else uh yeah absolutely so um i appreciate you reaching out to me about this video i'm so sorry that the power blew a transformer blew outside i don't know but here's uh, this is actually funny what i was talking about earlier in this video right was about you have the tools and we started this video with a 
big professional camera setup. I don't know if you can see it back there, but that's where I was sitting. I had my, I had a big fancy camera and lighting and audio and all this stuff. And it was a lot of fun. And it obviously looked better than what you're seeing now, but we were able to improvise. I said, well, the, the, the power went out, um, but I still have a device. I still have a tool here in my pocket that will give me video and it will still let me tell this story. And that is the most important thing that you can tell a story with a big fancy red. You can tell a story with a cell phone and the content, the message is the same no matter what. It doesn't matter what you shoot it on, what you edit it on, you're still getting the content. And so if I were to have one, one final thing to say, um, maybe his motivation or inspiration is to go back to what you were saying. And that is, uh, hopefully I'm still there. Yeah, I'm still there again. Okay. <laughs> My goodness, technology. Um, that final bit is to say, just, just create, just make content with your cell phone, with your little camera, with your big VCR, VHS camera. If your parents have one that's been sitting since the 90s, just, just do something, be creative, make content and, um, and tell stories because at the end of the day, there is a market, there is a need, there is a demand, there will always be a demand for video. So the sooner you start, the better you're going to be throughout, throughout your journey as a, as a content creator, as a videographer.